Hi there, it's Claire here from My Creative Spirit with a new kit to share with you. It's our A6 notebook kit and um, or covers. They come in a pack of two, so you get two sets of covers and spines. And this is what they make. Let me show you the paper ones first. These cute little handbag size notebooks. If you like working with papers that have six by four pictures on the front um, or in them, they're perfect for putting on the front of your little book. And then all of the pages are all stitched in. So there's four sets of signatures. It's an easy stitch notebook. I haven't seen anybody else um, stitch a book like this together. So um, I just thought I would share it with you today and how to assemble it too. So this one was covered in a mixture of papers from Botanical Tea and Gilded Lily. And I think Café Parisienne on the inside, if you're a Graphic 45er. Uh, this one is the new Portrait of a Lady collection from Graphic 45, with this um, gorgeous picture of the lady on the front. And then the papers inside. All the little books are bound using our black um, tape, and I'll show you how to put them together. So that was a fun one. And then we did make and take at the weekend at the Cornwall Papercraft Show, and we created um, fun little notebooks using the Café Parisienne papers. I'll show you the size of them. And then this is one that I created my own papers for using the Distress Oxide inks. It's looking very green because I have covered it um, in the collage medium, the Distress Collage Medium by Tim Holtz. It gives it a lovely shiny finish and it stops any of the chalky residue coming off. I found it was coming off on the pages, but um, I've covered the inside with it on the front but not the back so I don't know if you can see the difference it's made this one quite shiny and it's really brought out the green on the uncoated one you can still see some of the oxide patches on top of the distress ink I love working with these um, and then I've used the Jofi stamp plate on the front to create my little poppy and it says may all your weeds be wildflowers so I thought that was a nice little um, book to make they make great gifts and um, if you're crafting for charity great little prizes or um, projects for stalls so let's show you how they go together so to make them you need um, the cover kits and some of our um, black tape. I'll put the link to both under the description or in the description under the video. So this is our, um, it says neutral on here, but actually it is black, as you can see. And the first thing we're going to do, or I'm going to show you is how to assemble the covers. So I'm just going to take the tape. If you haven't used it before, it's fabulous um, tape for constructing the projects. It's rippable, it's waterproof, it can be painted, it can be gilded, and I'm just going to take it around the cover, just on three sides, rip it off, and then I'm pressing down, but not right up to the corners, and then I'm just going to snip into the corner, peel back, squash down, and then just nick that little edge off and that gives you a really nice square corner so I'm going to do that oops, all the way around let's just snip it off and then turn over let's just take these bits off the scissors And snip. Titanium scissors work really well with the tape because uh, they are, or well, the tape tends not to stick to them. Mine are just normal scissors, so they catch. So 
you get a nice flat covered edge for your book. So that's one. Let's do the other one. So I'm starting on a short side and just pressing the tape down on the flat edge of the cover and then taking it all the way round to the end, pressing it down just to get those, they're almost like little ears at the corner. So it's quite quick to do. Stick down. When you put your papers on, it covers up most of the tape anyway. off the scissors. Now they've stuck to me. <laughs> and lift up and stick down. So that's the covers done. And then we're going to take a piece of tape that's an inch longer either end than the length of the spine. I'll do it facing you so you can see. And then I'm going to put one of the covers over the top, lining up the bottom edge with the edge of the spine and the sides. And then I'm going to lift both pieces up and roll them forwards, press them down and roll them over. And then just flatten the tape on, just on the MDF, open out, and you get a double width opening and then bring the ends of the tape in and over. And then just cover up that gap. And then if you run your finger up and down the gap, it presses the tape right into it. And you get a really um, almost hidden join where the tape's joined or overlapped. And then I'm going to turn over and do the same again. The holes get hidden. We're going to poke them through again in a minute. Oops. So a long piece of tape, about an inch longer than the spine. And then I turn it round. Second cover over the top, lining up with the first and roll over. Pressing down just on the MDF, open out, bring your ends over, and then take a piece of tape and cover the ends. Press in the middle, press in the middle, fold up and then push the covers under the spine and that just creates a really nice spine for your book. Flatten the ends and then we just need to find the holes again. So you can use your second um, spine if you want to. They're one and a half inches in so this one doesn't want to through. So I've poked through from the outside and now I'm just going to flip over and poke through again from the inside. I'm just using a bradle so we've got our holes and then um, the tape takes all the treasure gold the gilding wax really really nicely so if you want to go around at this stage um, and put a gilded edge on your book it's really quick and easy to do. I'm desperately trying not to get it on the cover on the table. So I've put a new sheet over, or a new paper over, and I'm dreadful. I get it really dirty really quickly. So this is um, Treasure Gold in the White Fire. 
you can see it just adds a really lovely edge to the book. You can put it on with a paintbrush if you want to. I just use my finger and just rub it where I want it. Let's come down the spine. Again, most of it gets covered up when you add your papers. So don't worry about how far it's going on to your tape. Just go around this side. And you really don't need too much, it's fabulous. And it sits beautifully on the tape as well. Right. Just clean my finger off. I'll rub most of it off. Pop the lid on. And move my little bag away. Hopefully I didn't get any on the table. And then you can add your papers, whatever you're cutting. So I'm just going to use some tacky glue to add. I'm using Midnight Masquerade papers from Graphic 45. Um, it was very difficult to choose which side to use, but I do like the purple starry paper, so I thought I'd go with that for the outside of my little book. So I've cut the papers a quarter of an inch, no, an eighth of an inch smaller than the size of the covers, and that way they sit really nicely with a black edge. So I'm just using a paper towel just to push the ink or the glue right up to the edges to make sure that the papers stick nicely. Tacky glue and tape will stick beautifully on our black tape. Always put some glue across the middle of your papers as well and then they won't bubble up. The nice thing about using tacky glue is you've got some movability time, a bit of leeway to get your project or your papers in the right place. Just make sure that they're all nicely stuck down. Now the one thing I'm not sticking on at the moment is the spine, but I have cut the spine piece and I've put two strips of double-sided tape on the back. And I'm going to flip over and pop my pieces on the inside. I've inked all the edges of the papers with um, vintage photo brown ink just to get rid of the white core. I think it makes your projects look much more professional if you do that. Especially when you're working on black, those white edges really stand out. I just wondered if that, you won't notice because you never see the front and back at the same time, but I was just checking to see if um, the pattern was continuous. It is, but with that side, <laughs> which is no good. Stick that there. And you can see really quickly, it's probably taken 10 minutes to get this far. Not even that. How long have we been filming? It's not telling me. Um, so they really are quite quick little books to make, but a lovely gift. And then I'm just going to flip back over, make sure that these are stuck down. 
all the way around the edges and then I'm going to add my picture just on the front. I'm not backing it with anything. Um, the other books I did go around with a black pen just around the edge of the picture to make it stand out and that was just, I just used a normal ballpoint pen, nothing crafty and it did make the picture stand out from the background paper. But I did wait until the glue was completely dry on the front before going round with the pen because otherwise the um, nib gets caught in the glue and then it doesn't work. So I've done that and I've put it on the wrong, <laughs> the wrong side because I'm working upside down, which is not good. Let me just see if I can remove it and turn it round quick. I might have to stick another picture on the top. I'm just going to do it off camera because it is an unpleasant operation. It's not looking so good. Oh, actually, it's not looking so bad. I'll bring it down on the table again in a minute. Let's just get this last little bit off. I can't believe I did that. Right, so we're going to go this side. Let's put a bit more whoops, glue on. Don't look at the front of my book. We all have happy accidents, don't we? I think I'm in Australia. And we all have unhappy accidents. Right, that's the right way. Let's just line it up. I'm really glad I noticed before it was too late. No one will ever know. Were you shouting at me? I bet you were. So, covers are decorated. Now it's time to start stitching. So, um, I've just used standard copy paper, which um, here in the UK is A4 sized, just white, but 90 GSM, not 80 GSM, which is the standard that you buy. And I've cut each sheet into two um, and then made four sets of signatures out of um, the eight sheets or 16 sheets. So you need 16 sheets of copy paper, cut it up and then make yourself a guide. Where's mine gone? Oh, there it is. That is the depth of your paper and then just make some holes to match the holes in a, on the spine and using your brad or brad or just poke your holes through so that they are sitting on that fold line on all of them and then you're ready to start so four sets of those 16 sheets cut in half lengthways so cut in half here and then fold it up short edge to short edge and then on the outside of your book, you want to put a strip of double-sided tape just between those holes. And take the backing off, which is easier said than done. This tape is not, um, not the best. Let's do it with the... Braddle. Oh, that's that. And then you want to get yourself a needle, a decent needle that you can actually hold as you're pushing your cotton through um, the signatures, and nine lengths. So I did nine lengths from top to bottom of, I'm using Gutemann's. Um, linen thread so it's not particularly thick um, but I'm using it double which is why I did nine lengths of the book um, spine threaded it through the needle and pulled it double but with no knot 
and then I'm going to take it from the outside through the hole, it doesn't matter which hole you go through, until you've got those ends near the hole and just stick them down onto the tape. And then we'll start stitching the pages in. So I'm going to go through one hole into the middle of the page set, back up through the top hole and then pull that thread tight and then take it down through the hole in the spine, out the other side, pull it tight and if you pull it tight now and then drop it onto the sticky your sticky tape and press those threads down it holds the page in place and then let your page or your page set drop down come back through the first hole pull your cotton through so it's nice and tight and then repeat so through all the holes on your paper into the centre, back through the top hole, pull your cotton tight and then down through the hole in the spine. So you're literally looping round adding each of your signatures and then pull it tight and stick it down onto the tape and then let your signature drop down, back up through your hole. So all of the pages are all added through the same hole. I think I've got mine in upside down. Never mind. So this is the third one going on. Up through, down through the hole. When you get to the third and fourth, you have just to jiggle around to get your needle back through that bottom or top hole. So lift your cotton up, stick down onto the tape, and then through for your last one. It will come through. <laughs> it does. So, pull it tight, up through the last signature, and down, down through the hole in the cover, which I can't find. Where are you, hole? Definitely there, we've been through it. Let's do it this way. Hopefully I won't spike myself. That's it. Pull it tight. Close your book. And then take your needle under all of the threads up and then take the end through the loop before you pull tight and then do it again up and back through the loop and pull tight and then stick those ends down on the tape and cut them off. So all of your pages are in, and if they're all pulled tight, they'll sit together really nicely. And then all we've got to do is just put that spine piece on. So that's the paper with the double-sided tape on it. So let's remove the backing, always a nightmare. Done it. 
So I wouldn't stick this on with tape. I would stick it on with double side uh, with glue. I'd stick it on with double sided tape so that it sticks straight down. And let's center it up a bit better than that. And then it sticks straight over all of those cottons. And if you press it down really firmly down the edges, it just hides all of those stitch lines. And that's it. That is the little stitch book made. So you could use any sort of paper inside. The number of sheets that you need per signature might vary, but you could use watercolour paper, you could use cartridge paper, um, you could even use pattern paper and make dividers, all sorts that you could do in these lovely little books. But they're just a lovely fun gift and a really nice thing to make. We all like to write notes, don't we? Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Don't forget to give me the thumbs up if you'd have and subscribe to my channel to be kept up to date with um, new videos as they come out. Thanks for watching.